Hi guys, Hengist here from House Hengist Comics and a big welcome back to the channel Beansters and to our new subscribers too and welcome to the war. Anyone up for perverting? Yes, the original crystal meth as used by German forces in Blitzkrieg, May 1940. No more sleepless nights guys. And today it is episode 27, Low Gear and Logistics, a tester. But first the news and today we're going to look at the Allied plan or Gamblin's Gamble as I've called it. Now, to understand this, you've got to look closely at this map, so please freeze it. Uh, the French First Army are moving on Namur. The British Expeditionary Force Brussels and the French Seventh Army into Holland, with the First Tank Division moving up into the Breda Gap. Now, if you look closely at this map, you'll see that basically the plan is all based on Belgian and basically Holland buying time for the Allies to get into position. And Gamblin had gambled that basically the Germans were going to use a version of the, the uh, Schlieffen plan which they used before. Now look closely. If you look at French 1st Army, this is 2nd uh, and 3rd uh, Division Leger Mechanique. And you can see that dotted line there which is Gemblo Gap. There are two defensive positions. The first delaying action is on the Albert Canal. We've done a lot of the battles around here. And then the second main defensive position is on this dial line. However... This is a lure and feint by German forces. And as you can see the concentration here of army groups A and B, there is a staggering number of infantry supporting that armour. And it's drawing all, basically, the Allied forces north. They are not expecting an attack, basically, across the Meuse or near Sedan, or ultimately a huge, basically, joyride across France towards Abbeville, as seen here on the left-hand side of the map. And here at Hanau, the largest tank battle uh, in the history of World War II today is about to take place between the 2nd and 3rd Division Leger Mechanique versus uh, Hörpner's Panzer Divisions uh, 3 and 4. And they will engage at Hanau. Now, what is, again, critical about this is that this is a feint to draw, effectively, uh, the French armour into this position so that the rest of the German armour can go south through the Ardennes and punch through. And effectively, this will be facing very weak opposition. What is critical to this success is logistics and today I wanted to build a tester around the logistics for uh, basically the German mechanized forces which I think are very much an unsung uh, hero element in this campaign because to keep this sort of force going uh, to, to do these sort of very large runs and deep penetrations takes a lot of coordination and cooperation uh, plus the equipment to do it. So today's forces are very much unknown uh, to both players who are commanding French and German forces. They are tank forces, mainly French Hotchkiss, uh, light tanks, I suppose, uh, pretty well armoured, but with a low velocity 75mm uh, gun. But they're up against uh, Panzer forces, which are arriving, uh, if they get there, on low fuel and uh, low ammunition. So this is a really interesting uh, concept and one we intend to test. It's a, not a full-blown battle. So let's have a look at the mission and the set, and let's talk about logistics, because they just aren't. And they are totally ignored in a wargaming context. If you just consider the amount of vehicles, you know, a simple question like, what does the tank take, diesel or gasoline? If you get the wrong fuel, it's a real mess. And basically, you can't move stuff forward with impetus if you haven't got the equipment and the spare parts uh, to do so. And this includes things like horses as well, as well as motorbikes. If we start adding up all the different types of vehicles, all the different components, you require not just fuel, not just ammunition, not just fodder, but also rubber, small component parts to replace them. And of course, in this image, just to, to uh, support a battery, the number of support vehicles as well. And also aircraft, if we think about that, and all the components in an aircraft, uh, this is what becomes increasingly interesting. And, and I think it's a factor which will ultimately inhibit the Germans later on in the war. But the German infantry as well require everything, not just from underpants uh, to belt buckles. They need food and they need ammunition. And just look at this guy, basically just the time it takes to sort out ration packs, let alone the cooks who have to supply themselves and, and hundreds of others. So they've got a big role to do, especially when the German troops are on hardtack, exhausted and tired. 
They've got to keep those, uh, the, the fuel for those uh, infantry to keep moving. So there are a lot of issues uh, surrounding logistics and it is a complex component, part of warfare. Uh, just look at the, uh, the the number of symbols here for the different types of mechanized forces. And I think what's really rather interesting as well is uh, a, a comment that I heard, which basically, you know, a good general relies on, on tactics, but a great general relies on logistics. And I think that's really, really important, especially when we look at the success of how Blitzkrieg is operated, and especially because most of it was horse-drawn. Now, we all know the German army was horse-drawn, but how how did it keep going along with the mechanized along with the infantry i mean this is what i find quite fascinating it is poo-pooed later later on in the war but here and also in barbarossa when it was at absolute overstretch it still manages to perform so let's now look at the set and what we've built for this. I'm trying to build uh, a number of uh, complex features within the landscape. Uh, again, I want to prove the point about how difficult it is for armor to move through built up areas. Sometimes you've got to peg lanes outside of a town or through a town to get armor through. You've got civilians, you've got all the sort of infrastructure in and around a town. So when you're replicating this on the table, I think it's very important that it is as detailed as possible. Uh, that really does produce line of sight problems, uh, movement problems, and here on the periphery at the Blue House, uh, we can see basically that uh, the, the surrounding area is slightly more open and more ideal for tanks. But in this game, what we're trying to test is, you know, basically whether or not the Germans can refuel under attack. And it's all going to be about, effectively, the uh, French counter-attacking, but everything is deck driven and so no one's going to know what's coming on or where, other than the Germans who will start with a reconnaissance platoon of, uh, I think it's a total of four, uh, six rads on the table, and their basically logistics station. But other than that, I don't know what's going to happen, and, and, and that's what this game is really about, to test and explore a number of the logistical problems, using dice basically to refit and skill test, uh, to see how quickly the Germans can effectively uh, refit themselves and keep moving and keep their impetus going against a counter-attack. Uh, so ultimately this is quite complex. Um, I won't get into all the concepts and the rules but if you're interested contact me because this is just at an embryonic stage and we're testing and developing it and this is because we have a lot of battles coming up in France where logistics will start to become a strain and a problem. So I want to do that. So now without further ado let's have a look at this battle action and the tester for this. The town is very quiet at the moment. There are some civilians present and vehicles. Uh, the the uh, six rads have arrived, but they've got low fuel and low ammunition. And the first cards that are sort of drawn are for the French and their infantry come on, but not in the town where they'd hope, over on the, uh, the German right flank. We've got civilians uh, leaving quickly. And then we get the Germans arriving in their half tracks. Again, low fuel, low ammunition as well as some Panzer 1s. Now he has a number of dice, like a pool for aircraft. He can spend as much as he wants and roll against the skill test, what he thinks is important. And so he rolls five dice to try and get the tanks into play as quickly as possible, which he achieves. But the French are moving up into the wood with a view to, even though they, are, they aren't supported, and this was a concern for the French, other than the two anti-tank guns, uh, they, they want to make a dash, basically, on that logistics point. Because if they knock that out, the German armour is, is, is not any good. And here we see, uh, basically, this platoon refitting, refueling, and having uh, something to eat, some brockwurst or something, as the vehicles leave. The Panzer ones have now, basically, refueled as some of the uh, Panzer uh, uh, excuse me, some of the uh, six rats have come back and they start refueling. Now, what we've got here is the cook obviously feeding the men as well. That just takes an entire turn, it's not rolled for. We get the odd card which is appearing, which is a test of low ammunition, which is immediately thrown on the platoon that has basically moved out, i.e. the Panzer one, but that fails. We've also got the uh, the food area, but that hasn't been exploited because the, uh, the half tracks are moving straight towards the blue house. As the Panzer twos have gone up uh, on the other wing, they're trying to fan out and produce a protection 
uh, sort of perimeter around their logistics center because the vehicles are moving by, the French infantry are moving up and their anti-tank guns now start firing. And these are the first shots of the game and they whiz down range and basically hit one six rad, putting three uh, suppression points on, on her and stopping her dead, uh, a sitting duck per se. But they have radioed in that there are infantry in the woods and the Panzer ones are going to go off and basically break off and engage these to try and prevent them getting too close. Uh, in the meantime, we've got uh, the Panzer Grenadiers debussing effectively and moving towards the Blue Maison. But what we also have is the French armour, which is arriving through the town, slowly coming up, opens fire on the Panzer Grenadiers and causes casualties. Uh, they are very quick, basically, to scupper into cover and send their half-tracks to the rear. They don't want them chewed up for no reason. And we also have a Stuka attack. She's shot down by anti-aircraft, which have come on by the French, uh, and that crashes off table. And also some Panzer III's arrive, which puts fear into the French's heart, but that has to be refueled and takes time. The Panzer II's sort of, uh, Panzer I's engage the French infantry, and they're trying to form this perimeter, as you can see, breaking out and fanning out, so that they can keep their impetus going. And really the game is, is all about the rolling and the managing of uh, the, the, the platoons as they come in. They're randomly appearing, and so sometimes trucks have to be sent out. They've got air cover, that's coming in sporadically, it knocks out a tank. But the French start to concentrate through a uh, fortune of cards, really around the town, and they bring into play about 21 tanks, which is a huge firepower ratio, uh, down there against the Panzer threes and the Panzer twos, who will soon see moving up to support them. But it's chaos and confusion. A lot of platoons aren't be refitted because once your five four three two one dice have run out you're on a single skill tech and so it's critical to judge how you need that especially like with the uh, the mortar platoons and the one and two i see that arrive literally limping on and run out of fuel and gas uh, and ammunition so they've got to send trucks over to them to refit we have a fuel leak card that is played on the the lead panzer three tank it fails reaction uh, doesn't stop the leak and basically she's limping along at six inches. The uh, heavy anti-tank guns by the French dominate the centre and no one can really get near them. The, uh, the tanks are also supporting that now and uh, basically the Germans are pushing forward where they can but they've, they're delayed by a lot of the refitting which is making it really tense and uh, you know the French tanks are engaging quite well but they're sluggish through that town they can't all get up and get into a good firing line uh, as a dispatch rider arrives he put puts basically on and runs out of fuel uh, we've then got basically the Panzer twos. now they are to be there for four turns trying to refit because all the dice have been used up we were down to a single roll each turn because all the fuels are uh, you know being really uh, already re uh, administered uh, we get a, a Jimmel fix it card which allowed the Panzer III uh, to try and fix his problem but again that was joking the German infantry well they have to come on on foot because their vehicles basically uh, stop off table without fuel and it's a bit chaotic and a bit of a mess and they've got to be stopped and halted for several turns to basically eat uh, and, and rearm but it's not the panzers day they, they start engaging the french tanks and stake a lot of damage uh, and by the end of this sort of game uh, although they sort of retaliate really i would say the french had the upper hand they knocked out a further panzer a couple of panzer threes and were to really control the the, the center but they didn't stop the refitting operation and that's what it was all about and although this isn't, wasn't about points, this was a fascinating game because there were really tense moments. If the French had moved forward, if their cards had been more beneficial, I think they would have been on the Germans. And so ultimately, it was a really exciting, interesting, challenging game. And we'll, we'll work more with this and explain more. So what can we say in postscript? Well, have a go. Start exploring logistics and all the problems that relate to mechanized warfare. It's not just about tanks shooting each other and moving up. You know, tanks basically that are refueled against tanks that aren't are going to bypass them or shoot them up and they're going to keep that momentum going. And I think that's what a lot of Blitzkrieg is about. But I just also want to shout out about Rochester Games and Models, where I go. They're local. They're opening a shop in Maidstone in Kent. 
Uh, what a great place to go. Gaming tables, masses of gear in there, including railway stuff, which I pick up a lot of as well. So this is Blitzkrieg. Um, I look forward to your comments uh, as usual. And do stay safe, uh, stay tuned, and uh, stay lucky. Over and out. Bye for now.